Hello fellow builders, Mike here with you on the Sonics 413 channel welcoming you to the fifth installment of our build along video. We're building a capacitor free flight airplane and if you've been following along you've got something that looks like this. At the end of the last session we had installed our switch plate with the switch on it and some wires. We've got our motor mount pylon which optionally we could make out of foam or wood and I've got the balsa wood laminated version here on, on this build airplane. Uh, let's, uh, let's get right into it and with a little side trip to, to make a trim tab. Now you can see we've got a little movable section of the rudder there to help us when we're doing our flight testing to put a little turn into it. Here I've got a scrap piece of material just like what our rudder is made out of. What we'll do is put two little slits in the trailing edge and those are about perhaps a, a quarter inch in or three sixteenths and then taking like something that's not sharp but we're going to put it on a hard surface and just crease between those the end of those two little slits and all we're trying to do is make like a little hinge there and you can see that works really well we can bend it and that will let us set a turn into our plane uh, it's quite effective in a plane this small in fact that the amount of adjustment you're going to be making is probably less than the thickness of the material moving at thirty thousandths is enough to make a, a difference on the flight of the airplane. Once you've achieved the desired location and flight pattern you can put a tiny drop of um, tight bond glue right there to fix it into that spot permanently. Alright, so if you've got that done let's talk about engine thrust uh, and mounting up our motor. Why, why does it need to have thrust adjustment not pointing straight ahead well it's basically two reasons uh, one is if you can picture the motor being up on high mounted like this when it's thrusting it's trying to pull the nose down it, it, and it actually does do that so what we're going to do is angle the motor up a little bit let me show you on the, the one that's already had it done and you can see it's pointing upwards quite a bit there and also it's pointing to the right now I've got a standard rotation motor on this airplane it's turning at, as I look at it from the front it's turning counterclockwise so as it is turning this way the airplane wants to go opposite so this motor actually makes the airplane want to turn left when it's running and so we compensate for that by angling it off to the right like that. So if you've got a motor that turns in this direction, you're going to want thrust adjusted to the right to compensate. If you have a motor that's reversed rotation, you're going to have side thrust, but it's going to be exactly the opposite. It's going to be instead of like this, it's going to be like this, pulling the other way because the reverse prop rotation is going to pull you to the right. Okay, so um, it, it turns out that the amount of up thrust that we need and uh, let's put up a photo right here to show you a little clearer. We've got six degrees of up thrust in this design and probably the easiest way to um, eyeball that without any measuring instruments or anything is to build a little uh, or draw a little diagram that we can use to uh, just as a reference and we're going to eyeball that thrust adjustment in there I think it's probably as accurate as any way to do it just by eyeball now what I've done here is draw uh, a triangle start with a straight line select a point someplace nine inches away we'll put a vertical the vertical is going to be fifteen sixteenths of an inch and then 
back to the origin and that's I did a little trigonometry that those dimensions actually comes out to 5.95 degrees that's close enough to 6 and uh, so that's how we're going to eyeball this angle of the engine up thrust and the way we're going to do that too is I prepared a little balsa wood stick painted it red so you can see it here and I'm going to put that right on top of this motor pylon just pin it in there so it's nice and flat now you can already see that that's not the right angle that's actually pointing down a little bit or yeah it actually is pointing down a little bit <clears throat> so we're going to sand that we're going to sand that to the correct angle and let me uh, shut off the camera and go handheld here and I'm going to show you how we're going to eyeball this against our diagram okay stand by okay gang what I'm doing is holding a little red stick on the bottom of the wing okay and I'm holding that lined up with that bottom line and then you can see that the top one is parallel that's that's what we're eyeballing right there and what I've done is tack glued that top stick onto the motor just with half a drop of type on that'll snap right off there later no problem but we've got that angle drawn on the table and we can see that this motor is right at the correct angle of up thrust now regardless of whether you have a right or left hand rotation motor they each need the same amount of up thrust and then the side thrust is just a matter of holding the motor pointed to the side a little bit when that epoxy cures later so let's get that um, angle sanded into our motor pylon let me set up again hold on okay back to the live action on the building board you can see that glue joint in there between the wing assembly and the body block okay and that's parallel with the bottom edge I'm gonna line that up by eye well the other thing I did was put a put a red stick here indicator just temporarily pinned it into the top surface of our motor uh, pylon now I'm gonna line up our glue joint our wing glue joint I'm gonna wait to put this thing to focus and if, if I line up that glue joint with the bottom line you can see our top one is way off we're pointing way downhill okay so what we're going to do is sand that top edge and then keep comparing it to the diagram on the building board so that's going to be hard hard to do with uh, the camera running I guess we can try to do it let me set this back up into the tripod here and we'll, we'll all right we know we've got to take off some material here on the back of this pylon to bring this angle give us some more up thrust we're going to use our little 240 grit sanding stick and then sand away Okay, let me get a little bit of this done, and then I'll uh, have you back to eyeball check what I've done. All right, I've sanded it to what I think is the right angle here. Let's check out. Now, we're going to keep our eye on that glue joint, that horizontal glue joint that's parallel to the bottom edge here. The glue joint that attaches the wing assembly to the body block. Okay, we're going to line that line up with the, the bottom one that we've drawn there all right let's see and we can see
see our engine thrust line looks okay we've got six degrees of nose up or uh, up thrust on the motor and then we're going to figure out our right and left thrust after that so you can see what I did there just temporarily pin a little balsa wood stick there and use that to sight the uh, angle that we've drawn on the workbench good deal alright let me rearrange things here on the bench for the next shot we're going to start putting in that motor alright we've got our top angle sand it in there when you're happy with it double check two three times against our reference angle on the board there and when you're happy with that we'll go ahead and take this off um, what we're going to do is mark back 15 millimeters on that or exactly the length of our motor Just align the motor with the front of that pod. Um, if you have the, uh, if you're using the styrofoam motor pod, uh, you don't need to do this. It's just for the balsa one. So forward of our little mark there, we want to leave this area nice and flat because we're just going to glue the, uh, we're just going to glue the motor right onto there, and by holding it down against that surface we'll be assured that we have the correct amount of up thrust in it should work out all right now this area back here on the balsa one you could you could carve it back with with the sanding block a little or the sanding stick and make that curve nice and even there let's see where we go here we go and being careful not to poke the wing and then you could streamline it just a little bit in the back touch this area in the front we're going to let the motor sit on that all right we're ready to glue the motor on there with the exception of determining the side thrust let me show you for a moment here what the side thrust looks like I'll put up a picture of that so you can see and you can see that it's pointing way off to the right actually that's about seven degrees of right thrust now that thrust is put in there to counteract the tendency of the airplane to, to pull left in response to the engine torque okay and that is the case with a standard rotation motor the, the, the a motor that um, well let me show you don't forget when you're putting these props on push from the back plate so you don't destroy the motor okay this prop is pulling by turning this way when I'm in front of the airplane it, it appears to be counterclockwise that's actually what you call a clockwise prop or a standard prop okay uh, and w one go that is pitched the opposite way is a reverse pitch or an anti-clockwise prop now these little motors actually they have brushes that are installed with a rotation to them and they actually have a preferred rotation now um, generally um, they come with color-coded wires and either you're going to see like a, a pair of that are red and black or red and blue uh, in that case the red is the positive and you can just hook up a little uh, capacitor or a, a double a battery to your motor uh, with the positive going to the red and 
whichever way that motor turns at that point it should be going this way from the front right counterclockwise looking at it from the front that's a standard rotation and it takes a prop like this now uh, in the first episode of this video I said that if the wires are unmarked you can just see which way they turn and use them either way and I I got called on that by a viewer and technically you know he's right that there is a preferred direction of rotation but I would just point out that you see these little cordless motors in all kinds of applications including for instance uh, servos and in that application they run equal amount of time uh, forwards and backwards because the servo works both ways and I've had no problem running these with you know contrary to the preferred rotation for instance if I only had um, a, a prop that uh, of one direction and the motor didn't particularly match I would mark the wires opposite and make it turn the prop the right way and ignore the fact that it, it it's not the preferred rotation like I say they they run forever um, and we're running them so far below their rated um, um, current rating and RPM rating and everything I, they're gonna last forever no matter what so um, don't concern yourself about that so what I've got here is the motor I'm going to use it's already marked up positive and negative and if I take a partially charged capacitor that long lead is the positive so I'm going to just touch it there and there's I can feel it blowing a nice breeze that's only a little partial charge but that's turning the correct direction and my wires are marked red and black positive and negative so that when I get it in the airplane I can hook it up without further reference or testing okay so if you have a motor that turns this way standard rotation it has a gray back uh, um, brush plate on it the uh, the ones that are preferred to turn the other way have a white brush plate on the back uh, as far as the uh, Banggood so-called upgrade 615s that we're using for this by the way I'll put or I already have put the uh, links to the motors propellers and switches and caps um, they're in the text description to episode one of this video series so if you're interested in getting those parts ordered up go back to video number one in this series look in the text description and there's some hot links there take you back to the page on Banggood where you can order these things up they're uh, well worth the uh, small small expense uh, a lot of fun okay let's get back to it uh, I've got a motor that is going to be standard rotation it's going to require thrust pointing off to the right if you're using the opposite rotation motor just picture the angle being the other way you're going to be point you're going to be pointing left the same amount and we'll show you how to set that up all right like we always do let's let's do a little measuring on our board here let's make sure that we got some video time left here oh I'm just about out oh no I'm not I'm okay let's keep going a straight line right here first of all select a point along that line measure back seven inches make another little mark I hope you can see that let's see yeah you should be able to and then we're gonna go up 15 sixteenths of an inch 15 sixteenths so we've got a right triangle seven inches 15 sixteenths of an inch and then draw that line back to the origin and keep going draw keep going right through that's our seven degree or actually seven and a half degree offset and uh, let me uh, show you that I may have to go handheld to show you that but if I lay this right on top there I've got the, the motor uh, uh, equipped with a stick just for the camera visual clarity but if I look straight down at this the fuselage is perfectly lined up with that first line and this is lined up perfectly with that seven and a half degree line so I've I've got seven and a half degrees of right thrust there 
easy to eyeball it just by putting it over this diagram okay very simple so when we go to install our motor on the build airplane we're going to have this pinned down on the board right on that center line our up thrust is already set by that angle of that deck if we just keep the motor down against it flat we'll be assured of having the right up thrust and then we're going to turn it to align with that seven and a half degrees of side thrust right thrust and we're just going to let it cure up that way we'll keep eyeballing it during the epoxy cure and uh, we should be assured of a good good accurate um, thrust angle should be the same as the original one here which flies pretty well with that setup so I'd say do it like this you probably got a pretty good chance of flying it having it fly right off the board so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take a minute now and uh, shut the camera off and I'm gonna set this up right over that over that center line and I'm gonna pin it down by the uh, right against the table with the uh, bottom of the fuselage right on there and uh, and then put some pins we're going to be cutting some of these um, angles or ends off of here so if you want to pin through the last lower half inch of the front and back um, right right here going at an angle going at another angle pin it down to the board I'll be right back and we're going to mix up some epoxy all right, we've got our airplane pinned down to the building board over the center line. Let me just show you how that is set up. Right here, we've got our center line of the fuselage block right on the original the center line. Same thing in the back. We're right on that center line. Now, where our two red lines intersect, it's hidden underneath that block, but I've got the blue line drawn there. We can see it on both sides. And if we get right over the top, you can see there's a mark on top of that engine pylon, motor pylon. And what that is, is when we go to mount that on there, that is the halfway middle of the motor. We line the motor up with the front of the pylon, and we're looking at, looking at it sitting right there okay that's where we're going to epoxy it and we're going to be off to that seven and a half degree angle now what i did the, the motor we're going to be installing i've uh you you could possibly do it this way but i'm doing it basically so you can see it on the video i put a stick on it accurately aligned and when we install it it's going to go let's see right on there and line up with that hard to do this through the camera but you can see how we're going to line it up with that other line right there that's going to give us our right thrust now that's <clears throat> again assuming you have a standard rotation propeller shaped like this okay that's a standard rotation you see the curve to it it's going to go you know, like this it's going to go this way okay so if you've got that Yes, we're going to actually use the seven and a half degrees offset to the right. If your motor turns the other way, redo your drawing here and do your measurements the other way and come out with left thrust for the opposite rotation motor. If, if you're doing it the way we're doing this one with right thrust, the airplane is going to climb and glide in a left hand pattern. If you have an opposite rotation motor, we're going to set it up to fly a right hand climb and glide pattern okay now that you've seen how this is set up let me put the camera back in the tripod we'll come back with some five minute epoxy all mixed up ready to glue that motor on there stand by all right I've got this epoxy well mixed it's been sitting there for about a little less than a minute I like to let it just start thickening up. It'll be a little easier to work with. You can see I've got a stick put onto this motor so that it'll help you see what we're doing on the camera. I've scratched up the, the bottom of this motor can a little bit with uh, some 400 grit 
just to let the epoxy grab it a little better. It'll still be uh, easy to pop it off. If you decide to, to go with that stick, that's just glued on with a with little tiny drop of tight bond, which is not designed for metal, and so it'll pop right off of there very easily later. Okay, so now it's been a minute and a half or so. Still very, very thin. I'm going to put some right here on the top surface of our motor pylon. Make sure it gets right into that wood grain. And not a lot of this stuff. <laughs> Epoxy, everything you put on there stays there, so it does, none of it evaporates. So sparingly applied, and just on the bottom of this motor, literally about half a drop. Okay, doesn't take much, and you know if it pops off of there on a hard landing or something um, it'll leave a nice curved spot it's easy to find the thrust angle and put it right back where it was and you might save a prop shaft now I'm waiting for that to just thicken up a little bit uh, hang with me gang I don't want to shut off the video now it's just getting to the right point just starting to thicken up a little bit. Now, keeping those wires out of the way, I'm going to put it right on the top of the pylon where we talked about, halfway point of the motor, right on that mark. And we're going to get it so that when we look straight down on it, we're aligned with, with that 7.5 degree side thrust. And I'll, I'll get you a better view of this in a second. But now what's going to happen is the epoxy will gradually thicken up and what we're going to have to do is just keep eyeballing it. The up thrust should be okay if we're down flat against that surface, which I feel we are. And if I visually check it, yes we are. And it looks like the right amount of up thrust. And then looking straight down, I can see that our side thrust is right on that seven and a half degree mark that all looks good and then getting a lower view I see that we are centrally located on that pylon that all looks good so what I'm going to do here is that as that epoxy sets up and it is it's it's getting stretchy now stringy I'm just going to keep checking that alignment make sure that thing doesn't move and when it when it sets up it'll be correct up thrust looks good side thrust looks good oh we're making great progress here yeah that looks just right all right i'm going to i'm going to uh shut off the camera i'll i'm going to fix a cup of coffee while that epoxy really sets up well that looks tremendous we'll be right back Yeah, just so you know that top view does look okay. There it is. That's what we're shooting for. Seven and a half degrees of side thrust. I think it's probably the most accurate way to do it. Okay, back in a flash when the epoxy cures, we'll unpin that and double check. Okay, that epoxy has had time to set up real well. It looks pretty good. I can see a bunch of up thrust in it. I can see a bunch of side thrust. Let's see how accurate we actually were in doing that. Now, for illustrative purposes, I've prepared another, another red stick. Excuse the camera pointing all off, off in all directions here while I get this set up. Tough to do with only one hand. Alright, but I think we've got it now. Alright, I'm holding the stick right underneath the wing. It's contacting the leading and trailing edges, so we're even with the wing. And now if we look at our setup on the bench, a 
looks looks pretty good. Let's see if I can get a better angle on it. Well, you get the idea. That looks really good. Now we'll get rid of that stick. Let's see how the top looked. We'll line it up with the motor right on that on those blue marks. The fuselage goes right on the center line. And there is our seven and a half degrees of right thrust. It's right on the money there. Looks good. So that actually looks correct. I can take our little guide stick off. Boy, that literally just came right off. So there we go. There's our motor. The next thing I'm going to do is set the camera back up in the tripod. And we're going to do a little bit of styrofoam trimming. And then we're going to decide where to plant that capacitor. Back in a flash. All right, there's the motor. Let's get something to mark with. And uh, what we'll do is, if you can see this, I hope I'm in the right spot. Yeah, it looks all right. I'm going to just take a uh, little bit of a straight edge right along the front of that fuselage, the angle of that motor pod there. Just do one of those. Cut that off. Okay. And then with our 220 or however you want to do it, stay off of that motor shaft. Okay. And then we're going to Sand a radius into that bottom. So we got something like that going on. Now, let's just round these front corners a little bit. And this is just for cosmetic purposes. We can break that corner just a little bit there if we want. Do the same thing over here. It's looking pretty good. And then we're also going to put a little radius as it goes into this corner here. just for cosmetic reasons. And I suppose maybe a little bit of aerodynamic reasons as well. Just nice and round to about that point underneath the switch. And then we're, we're going to take a little 
five minute epoxy and just put a light as you can skim coat on this front edge around on the sides just a little bit and, and uh, that's going to protect it when it lands uh, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'll show you how I do it. Let me come back with the epoxy mixed up ready to apply and we'll do that. Stand by. Alright, we've got some 5 minute DevCon epoxy mixed up there ready to go. We've got our front uh, section sanded nice and round. And this is, we're going to put a little epoxy there, thin coat. I know it weighs something, but uh, it, it really needs a little protection in this area. So we're just going to take a little bit of that five minute, put it only on that section. Hope you can see this. And then I'm going to wipe away most of it and just leave a little light skin to that stuff. We don't want it going down around onto the belly just right on the nose here and that first well that first quarter inch or so on the bottom by the way the uh, five minute epoxy cleans up real nice with uh, denatured alcohol I'm going to put the lightest little skim coat right on that wood too. Tiny bit there to hold on to that motor too. Alright, now that looks real good. There's no, there's no excess anywhere. And we're done with it quickly enough that it's got time to set up and have a nice smooth surface on the cured surface. So making sure this is not going to stick to anything, I'm going to set it aside, let it cure, and uh, I'll be back right after that. I'm afraid from here on in it's going to be a whole lot of short shots spliced together. So stand by for that. Epoxy cure time. Go. Excellent. Here's what it looks like. Let's put it aside for a moment. Well, no, let's do something else. Flip it over, and you can see I've got some little marks here on the bottom of the wing. And I've made them a little more prominent than you need to. Just a little speck, just so you can see it. I've made them a little darker so the camera can see it. Those are one and... Let me get it right. <laughs> Measure, measure twice, cut once. Yeah, I thought so. Inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter back from the leading edge, a mark on either side. Okay, and then out of your scrap foam sheet, cut a piece like this. The dimensions aren't important, but it's got to have a slot in the middle that clears the uh, fuselage, and we're going to put it up this way and balance it on those two little fingers okay and and what you can do is make a little cross piece that's going to go like that all right and we're going to glue that together this is some high tech test rig here balance weight and balance check rig Richie doesn't use a rig like this. He just balances it up on his uh, couple of his thumb and his finger, and that works too. All right, I'm going to take and pin this down to the work surface. Yeah, we may be going overboard, maybe a little too high tech, but. I think it's going to make it easier. There we go. And then 
when we're checking the balance point we can put it up on that and see where it balances like that okay and if I peek underneath we're about we're about a quarter inch in back of the intended balance point and that's okay because we're going to put the capacitor in there and shift it back and forth first of all we want to make sure everything is on there that is weighs has any weight of any consequence we've already put some epoxy on the front we don't have our prop on there yet so let's put that on there and we need one of those as always we're pushing from the back of that motor when we press the prop on so we don't push its little guts out the back all right there it is uh, so our switch is in there our wiring is in there that's about this simulates the finished weight pretty well uh, let me see the next thing we're going to do oh yeah we needed to make a little template ahead of time looks like this and what that is is a uh, template for installing our capacitor it's got the larger section is the size of the body of that capacitor and then it's got a little cutout here on the end it's the same width as the two wires okay so the dimensions to that are Hope you can see that. It's about like that. Ten millimeters. Twenty six millimeters. And then on one end an extra little cutout that's like six millimeters or a quarter inch going both ways so yeah it's a quarter here and it's a quarter here so when you cut that out that's exactly what it looks like okay and then just put that aside we're going to need that when we go to chop the old super capacitor into the fuselage now we know that when we tried the balance just a second ago I, I said it was balanced a little bit too far back well we're going to find out the what it takes to make it balance right on that spot I'm going to put this capacitor on the belly and I I want to have it I, I want to move that balance point forward from where it just showed it was so I'm putting the capacitor in front of that balance point a little bit and if I've got a little piece of clear tape here I do but it's stuck to this box of pins all right so this is probably not going to be the right spot on the first try but I know it's going to be somewhere around there. I've got it. I've got it located a little ahead of the balance point, so it's going to move that point forward. And just a moment ago, when I checked it, it was balancing back about here, about a quarter inch behind that spot. So now let me set it up. I've got a low viewpoint here. Try to put it right on those spots, and it's close, but it. It's actually is balancing there, but it's balancing with the tail a little low, and I want it to balance with the aircraft nice and level. So that means I want to move the capacitor forward just a little bit. Probably won't take much at this point. Try right there set it up again. I'm setting it right on those inch and a quarter marks. And by golly that's that's going to be the spot right there. She's hanging nice and level and it's being supported right on those uh, spots under the wing. 
let me double check it here make sure I can, I'm seeing it right because after this we're gonna chop it right in Anything, it, well, let me see. That's not right. This is a little bit fiddly, but you want to get it right. Yeah. Okay. Airplane's hanging nice and level. We're being supported under the inch and a quarter marks. So that's where the capacitor has to end up, right there. So um, we're going to get our marking implement. And we're going to mark a spot like right where the back of that capacitor is, which is right at the CG of the airplane, too. So we'll take that. Take that tape off, get our cap out of there, and then we'll locate our, our uh, cutting template. Okay, we've got our cutting template, and there's been a slight change in plans. Looking at the back side of this, there's very little clearance to put the... Uh, capacitor leads coming out the front so we'll have them come out the back the little extra cutaway on our template is going to go towards the rear of the aircraft and I've already done the major cut out there and uh, we'll just do the little rear one what I've done is gone in with the sanding stick and we've actually gone right up to the switch there right up to the switch if, if you don't have enough room um, it's all right to let the capacitor hang out past the edge of the fuselage a little bit or you could relocate the switch up I should have had you made the switch a little thinner profile and mount it up as high as possible uh, but this particular one it's, it's going to let me get away with it so we'll just uh, finish doing the cutout here basically it. Then we'll try the capacitor, make sure it fits in the hole. And it does very nicely. And so now what we're going to do is <clears throat> arrange it. If, if you're going to use the same type of charging plug that I do, I always have the positive lead on the bottom when I stick in the charging plug. So now I want the negative lead, which is the short one, which is the one with the minus signs on it. I want that facing the top of the airplane, and I want the longer lead without the markings, which is the positive. I want that facing the bottom, and that's going to go in there just like that. And then what I'm going to do is uh, get my needle nose pliers here and remember which way I want those wires to go. I want them to bend and come out the other side of the airplane. So let's do that. We're going to leave ourselves that quarter inch there that we want and then we're going to bend those away from us. Just like so. Now it should go right in there. There it is. That fits right in there very nicely. Our leads are coming out the other side. The longer one here on the bottom is the positive. So that's where that's going to go. We're not going to um, glue it in there or tape it in there just yet because we're going to leave ourselves some room to be able to swing it out a little bit and do some soldering onto it. Okay. 
So uh, at this point, I'm going to shut the camera off and get my soldering gear out. And we're going to start getting ready to do the final hookup. Stand by once again. Okay, I've got the soldering iron heating up and I've got it set up here to do our interconnections. There's our capacitor with the negative lead up on top there and that's the way it's going to go down into the fuselage with the positive down towards me. And that's to be compatible with my charging plug that I use. And If, if you watched episode one I think you see how I make that charging plug. If you've got your own way to do it, great, go for it. Uh, but what I want to do now is put another little bend in these wires. Now that's sitting just the way it's going to go into the aircraft and I want to take and bend just, whoop, let me make sure I'm where you can see it. I'm going to go just half the thickness of my fuselage block. In other words, one of those layers thick. And just bend the wire back the way it was going out of the capacitor. Yep. And I'll do the same thing with this one. And I'll show you what that's going to do. Okay, there it is. And then, when we drop it in here, You can see what happens is uh, the part that comes right out of the capacitor is right in the middle of the fuselage and then they come up and go back and they're laid right flat on the fuselage and at that point the capacitor is nice and flush in its mount in the fuselage. Now I realize things are getting pretty tight here it's going to be tough to see but uh, I'll try to explain and do the best I can. Now what we're going to do is take that capacitor and we're going to pop it up halfway out of the hole so that those leads are sticking up in the air and we can have a little room to uh, play with them there. Let me just double check, take a look through the camera lens. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. Um, I hope you can see that. All right, then we've got two wires coming out of our slide switch. And we're going to take whichever one makes the nicer path to this lower lead, to the positive lead on the capacitor. We're going to like come around the back here, and that's how long that one wants to be. So let me cut that. Now, if you want, you can leave some of these wires a little bit longer. Uh, and, and if you do that, they can be tucked up and taped up under that wing there, you know. Now, I'm going to try a little trick Richie showed me. I don't know if it works or not. I've never tried it yet. He says you heat up this insulation and it pulls right off. Don't burn your airplane. Oh, yeah. By golly, Richie, that does work. Okay. So now I'm going to come around here and this is going to get wrapped onto the positive lead. I'm going to come over the top. Yeah. Wow, this is some tiny stuff. What I'm trying to do is get it wrapped around that capacitor lead once or twice. There. Then I'll take and slide it down. I'm just trying to make this come out as neat, neatly as I can later. And if you have to lift that 
capacitor out of its little nest there um, to get at this. Um, do what you have to do. All right. I've got that. <clears throat> Not quite where I want it. Almost. There, I want it enough. No, it's not where I want it. I want it way over here. Alright. So I've got one wire coming from my slide switch, and it's going over here to the positive lead on the super cap. And I'm going to get that, get it while the getting's good. Guys, if you're going anywhere near this airplane with the solder and pencil, be sure you know where the tip of it is. If you just brush up against that, it goes right through it. Don't ask me how I know, but I do. Okay, there's solder joint number one. And if you get in there quickly enough, you can pull that insulation back down. I'm just putting it halfway back into its nest there. And what you'll notice is that the way I've done that, I can cut off the excess there now. That's our positive lead. And now the, uh, the negative one is going to be a, just a piece of hookup wire. That's going to go up to the motor. The, the motor is up on top here, of course, and there's the red and black. Um, they're not long enough to reach down to where we have to go there. So we're going to have to put another little piece of hookup wire onto that negative terminal. And we're going to pass it through a little hole in the wing, and we're going to go up to the black wire coming off the motor, our negative terminal. So um, let me just hunt up a little piece of hookup wire, and we'll be back get that little job done. Okay, I think we're going to have some choppy shots here from here to the end because it's going to take a little bit of setting the camera up, doing little short shots. Anyway, let me show you what we just did there. That first solder connection we just fastened was from one side of the switch over here to the positive side of the capacitor. That's the one thing we soldered in so far. Now, the next one we're going to do is the negative, um, the negative motor wire has to come back to the negative side of the capacitor. And, unfortunately, the, the wire that comes with the motor is a little too short. So, I've got some hookup wire here. We're going to solder it on there. Put a little piece of heat shrink and uh, make an extension here. Sometimes the wires are long enough on these motors, other times you have to splice and add. If you're adding adding wire, it sure doesn't have to be very thick. Not much amperage here. So let's see if we can get this one to stick. Oh yeah, there it is. Hard to see, but we, but we got it. And like I say, when that insulation is still warm, you can stretch it back up to where you soldered it. Because when you solder it, it kind of shrinks back. And, uh, not a bad idea to, while it's still warm, just slide it back into, into the spot. Let me see if I have a piece of heat shrink here. I did. There it is. that long. Slide it onto the end of that wire. It's slow going, but I'll tell you what, I see light at the end of the tunnel, guys. We are really getting there. There is that. Let's see if I have a lighter. Mm. Stand by. We'll try using the solder iron, I guess. Yeah, I 
match would, or a cigarette lighter would be easier than this, but this will get it done. Oh yeah, looks nice. Aerospace quality, ladies and gentlemen. Alright, now that has to find its way down to the, um, flip it over here has to find its way down to the negative side of the cap so what we'll do right here about at the end of the motor pylon we'll put a little hole down through there with uh, let me see what I have here for an object I guess the end of that ballpoint pen would probably work one little tiny hole and then this wire can go through that. Get through there, okay. And there it is. And we can bring it down. Bring the heat shrink right down through there too, I think. Yep. Alright, that looks nice. And then we're going to make it route it nice and neatly if possible and it's going to go on that negative capacitor lead just the way we did that other one and you see we, this thing only needed to be about a half an inch longer than what it was but that's the way it goes Just like we did last time, I can pop that capacitor up out of its nest. And then you're not going to see any of this going on because my fingers are in the way, I know that. But what I'm going to do is try to wrap it around that capacitor lead once or twice. So it doesn't move when I'm trying to apply the heat. Well, that is the spot right there. So what I can do is make sure it's right down like I did on the last one, down to that corner. And this is just trying to make it look neat here. Alright, and with the soldering iron, I'm going to have to turn this. You may not see it, but I've got to be able to reach it. Yes, shaky hands and all, but we caught it. And then I can take off that little excess. All right, and now that capacitor will drop right down in there. And it's all flush mounted. We've got one more wire hanging here. This is the second wire from that uh, switch. We'll send that up through that hole. And again, trying to do the over and under thing here so it comes out neat if we can. Yeah, we found it on top. Let me feed it through. Okay. So you can see what we've got going on down here under the plane. <coughs> as neat as possible. So, let's uh, recap with our schematic diagram here. Oh, my pen, my pen, my pen. My, there it is. Okay. The first one that we did was from the switch to the positive. That time we soldered an extension onto the motor negative about here, and we brought it the rest of the way down to the capacitor negative. So now the only wire left is from the switch up to the motor positive. And that's the one we just fed up through. And there's the motor positive. So there's the two wires we have to join. What we'll do here is um, try to plan it so that we can solder it up on top here. But then pull the uh, 
excess material back down through the hole. Where did that go? Yeah. And then hide it underneath the wing when we're done. So, as short as feasible here. Probably something about like, like that. Strip it. Strip that one. Not too tough. And I think I will preload this with a little piece of heat shrink tubing. Uh, no, actually, let's see. Well, yes, I will. <clears throat> Just in case it ends up next to another bare piece down there. I don't think it will, but... Okay, so we put that one on where it's out of the way. Won't get any heat on it. And then I'm going to do a splice here. Twist these ends together. Oh, I caught it on the first one that time. That's nice. Wow, I don't believe it. I got it. All right. Little, um, well, you know what? You put something down. It's lost. There it is. All right. Here we go. Once again, be careful with that hot point going near the uh, styrofoam aircraft. You put a hole right through it. Also, don't let a drop of solder go down through it because that'll go right through too. There's the joint. I see the metal flow in there. That is the last solder joint. I'm going to unplug my iron. I'm going to put the heat shrink down over that. Use the last few little BTUs of heat to shrink it down onto the wire. And then we're going to take and pull that through. put this iron right through the wing of my Ranger, my Goldberg Ranger. And actually it wasn't too bad. I cut out a square where it was damaged, glued in the new square with type on, and when it was dry just sand it with the stick and it was like like no damage was ever there. Alright, I'm gonna un unfasten that from the work stand. And now I think I can tease that wire back down through. Oh yeah, there we go, see? Pull it down through there. Oh, there. There we go. And the heat shrink kind of came off of that joint there. And just fix that up. I'm probably off camera, sorry. Alright, well there it is. So it's all hooked up there. What I can do is take a little piece of clear tape and fasten those wires right down there to the, to the side of the fuse. But that is actually all hooked up. Let's see if there's anything in the ca capacitor. Oh, a little bit. It's turning, so that means it works. Wait, let me put a, uh, a little quick charge in it and we'll check it out. Oh, this is exciting. We saw the propeller turn. All right, we'll hook up our charger and come in to our capacitor with the uh, charge plug like this. And you can come from either side. It's equally polarized. But there it is. And we're taking a charge. 0 0.8, 0 0.9 of a volt. Over 1 volt. 1.3, 1.5. Climbing, 1.8, and 2 volts, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, and it's slowing down, 0.8, really slowing down, that's a full charge. Alright, now, first full power, well, not even full power, you can push them a little more than this, but we're going to try it. Switch on. Oh, yeah. 
Feel that breeze? Feel it? Oh, that's screaming. That's trying to pull out of my hand. That would still be climbing right now. Excellent. Oh, that baby's going to go good. All right. So, my soldering iron is out of the way. I'm not going to hurt myself with it. The next thing we're going to do here is uh, finish the sculpting. We're going to take a little bit of this fuselage off. Curve, a curve about like that. Which the pen's not writing, but there it comes. Alright, we're going to cut about like that and sand it. So I'll be right back when that's done. And we've got just a couple more little things to do. Okay, we're back. This video is already an hour and ten minutes long, something like that. So I didn't want to waste footage here having you watch me sand the uh, fuselage. But you can see that's the shape I came up with. I was starting to draw it out there what I was going to remove and yeah just remove and to make a nice curve out of it something pleasant leave a little bit of material beneath the capacitor so we can uh, glue it in there and other than that just everything's been just shaped and sanded finished up with some 400 grit okay pretty neat over on this side where all the wiring is, uh, it all came out pretty neat. I was able to lay it out nice and flat like that. And uh, on the left hand side where all the three wires are coming over each other, I put one little blob of type on glue there. And you can't even see it. Most of it evaporates because it's water. But it, uh, it it's holding those into perfect uh, position like a like a wiring loom so that's pretty sweet um, did I mention yet oh probably not the, the wire the motor wires come down that little backbone ridge of the motor strut and we're gonna cut a little piece of clear tape and tape them down pretty easy okay so I'm gonna shut off the camera set up on the tripod mix some five minute epoxy and a little cut a little piece of clear tape and we'll be back to uh, do the final stuff here wow it's the home stretch for real okay I put a little piece of clear tape over those two motor wires and it just gives one less thing to get caught in the branches when it's up in the tree now, I've got some 5 minute epoxy freshly mixed up. I'm going to put just a little bit at the lower side of that capacitor and try to spread it out. The capacitor is going to support that last piece of foam there. There's not much else holding it. Okay, and then I'm going to get the excess out of there like I say later you can clean up with a little bit of uh, denatured alcohol takes the uh, uncured epoxy right off your fingers now watch out around that switch do not do not get epoxy in the switch like my buddy Rich okay now we're gonna go around Put a little bit on this side. Perfect. If it was any better, it wouldn't be any good. All right, and then this last little bit here. We're just basically trying to tie this capacitor in so that it supports the foam around it because there's not much foam. I'm 
trying to be very, very miserly with this stuff. Any little excess you can wipe off, do so. Take just a little bit of that extra that you have there and just a light, light skim coat around under the belly there. You, just a tiny bit will go a long way. There. I'm gonna find a little wipe. right around that charging hole, a tiny skin of it, just so it doesn't get beat up. Well, that's it. That is actually ready to go to the flying field. Well, I'd give it five minutes, I guess, for the epoxy to cure up, but other than that, ready to go to the flying field. Um, <clears throat> at, I'm going to put together a video of uh, doing a paint job on it and, and basically how to trim it and fly it. But uh, it's going to be a few days because the weather's not really going to be flyable around here for a few days. Uh, big cold front coming through. So, <clears throat> if you just can't wait, basically, if you've got the standard rotation motor like this airplane does, first thing you do is get it to glide in a left-hand circle, 20 or 30 foot circle. And when you've got it doing that consistently, then start adding power a little at a time and the circle might open up a little bit but it should still continue, continue to circle in the same direction even under power and as you add more power it should still continue to circle what, what my prototype blue one does is it glides fairly tight like about a 25 foot circle uh, when, when it's just gliding or if it's almost totally run out of battery power of capacitor power really small circles and, and high power on launch uh, opens up the circle and so it flies maybe 60 70 foot diameter circles and then of course it, it, it climbs up makes a couple big circles like that and as the power runs down it, it reverts to the glide characteristics and the circles get smaller and so it, yours might do the same thing might not but once it's set to glide in a left hand circle if it doesn't do that under power it's due to the engine thrust so if you get it to glide first then you 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 try to make it maintain the same direction of flight even under power by adjusting the thrust if you have to. Now the settings on this one should be real accurate. We took them right off the prototype that flew great. Did 50 seconds on its second test flight. We'll find out how this one does. So the, the project is complete. Other than letting the epoxy cure for five more minutes I'll, I'll be back in a few days with a video about doing a paint job and trim testing of, of the uh, flight. But like I say, it is ready to go. It, if you feel capable to do some flights, absolutely try it out. Start with a glide and then work up with power a little, little bit at a time. And uh, you'll see. I, 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 I have test glided this one of course and it, it it really works nice oh by the way to to achieve that little left hand glide first of all glide it with the rudder set straight and the thing should glide straight if it doesn't check for warps in your wings make sure they're both at the same angle and not twisted um, if if they if they look pretty close to each other you can make it glide to the left with a with that trim tab that we put into the rudder and like I say on the prototype it took about one material thickness of that foam about like you see there if you can see it 
That's how much it took to make it turn left, to make it glide left. And then the thrust settings that we have here maintain the left uh, under power. So that's going to wrap it up. Hey, hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber yet, subscribe to the channel. Richie says hi. And guys, if you made it this far, if you've got one of these in your hands right now, uh, congratulations. You really, you really accomplished something. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye now.